What's up everyone, Don here, and welcome to that one scene from Casino Royale. Today I'm finishing Don Salvatore's missions. I'm confiscating your station wagon. Nobody drives those things and nobody should. The next two missions of Salvatore are probably some of my favorite in the game, which is weird because the people that played this don't really look that fondly upon the mission, but I, I think it's cool you actually get a sniper rifle. The aiming of the sniper rifle does take a bit to get used to though, but I'll explain that in a couple minutes. This is where the enemies will start to wield AK-47s, which are not as deadly as the aforementioned M16, but <laughs> still deadly enough to be a problem. The cartel has got bottomless funds from pushing that spank crap. If we make an open attack on them, they'll wipe the floor with us. They must be making spank on that big boat that Curly led you to. So we gotta use our heads, or rather one head, your head. I'm asking you to destroy that spank factory as a personal favor to me, Salvatore Leone. If you do this for me, you will be a made man. Anything you want. Go and see Eight Ball. You'll need his expertise to blow up that boat. Okay, so the mission structure for this is actually odd in that the first act is only you trying to go over to 8-Balls and gathering $100,000 together for him to help you out, which is not re really a problem since you already have probably 200000 or more in the bank by this point. Yeah, GTA 3 is really, really generous with the money. Everything you buy in this game does not cost that much, probably below 5000 at the most. And there are no properties to speak of, so you can't buy those. Therefore, you'll just end up accumulating a lot of money by the end of the game. Anyway, here at 8Balls, he'll just ask you for the fee and he'll help you out. Yo, my man! Salvatore phoned ahead, but a job like this is going to need a lot of fireworks. I'll need $100,000 to cover expenses. But you know, with me, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Come back, brother, when you have the money. Yo, 8-Ball, I got the 100k. Damn, son, where'd you get that, don't ask. Okay, let's do this thing. I can set this baby to detonate, but I still can't use a piece with these hands. Here, this rifle shall help you pop some heads. You know what? 8-Ball is pretty cool. I like him. Too bad this is the last time we see him in-game. Don't worry, he doesn't die. He just disappears from the game entirely. Maybe he went into hiding? Nobody knows. Actually, that probably would be the best idea is to go into hiding after a stunt like this. Anyway, there's a small tutorial at the top left portion of the screen, which is telling you how to aim your sniper rifle. It's weird in that it's up as down, and down is up, as if you're playing Star Fox, but unlike Star Fox, you're aiming a gun, not piloting an R-Wing, which is standard for flying games like that, since, you know, you're pulling up to go, or you're pulling down to go up, rather. Here it's just nonsensical. Get a good vantage point, then I'll head in when you fire the first shot. Time to get into position. 8-Ball won't move forward until you fire. Use that to your advantage because he'll run slowly enough for you to clear the area but briskly enough for him to get onto the boat under 2 minutes. So you really can't afford to take your time sniping these guys as there are limited opportunities for 8-Ball to take cover after the first shot. The good thing about the snipe rifle is it's a one hit kill machine. It doesn't matter if you get a headshot or a body shot or any sort of shot to the gut or torso. I, I just said body shot and then torso and gut. Like, <laughs> okay, I'm apparently dyslexic today. But it doesn't matter where you shoot the target, they just die instantly. And you'll notice that the cartel members aren't really doing anything since 8-Ball's not within range yet and also I'm not within range so they're not, they don't know what's going on. They're just standing there. 
Ah, uh, 2001. A year where Stanley Kubrick thought that the AI would become intelligent enough for free thinking, but instead we got AI that's really dumb enough to exploit. We're living in the dark future. Damn, I was kind of hoping that guy still had the AK on him, but it disappeared that quickly. Where the hell is 8-Ball, man? Screwball, that's what he should be called. God damn! At least you get 100 grand back and then some. And also, 8-Ball is apparently immune to explosions. Not a scratch or anything. Possibly some cinch hairs, but... Dude was bald anyway, so we can't really tell. But like I said before, this is 8-Ball's last appearance in this game. He does... or his shop, rather, does appear in Vice City as like a little easter egg. It's kind of like located in the docks area. But otherwise, we don't see 8-Ball in that game, and I don't think 8-Ball even appears at all in San Andreas. So, yeah, that's it for 8-Ball, just running away from an explosion. Like a boss. Anyway, that debacle dealt a serious blow to Catalina's ego. And her operations, but mostly her ego. But I wouldn't know that because we don't even see her reaction. My paddy wagon is still there for some strange reason. Uh, no way I'm taking this piece of shit back. Time to do a little bit of spring cleaning. Down the hill with you! You know, being a vandalist in video games is fun. I condone that. Just don't do it in real life or you'll go to jail. And also, I hate that ugly mom car. It was a piece of crap anyway. It's my favorite cleaner. I'm proud of you, my boy. You kicked the shit out of those grease balls. I just got one little job for you before we can all celebrate. There's a car around the block from Luigi's Club. The inside is covered in brains. We ought to help some guy make up his mind and it proved a little uh, messy. Take it to the crusher before the cops find it. We're taking another car to the crusher? Didn't I do this twice before? This mission is different though. A side note here, I really do like this Mafia Sentinel. It's fast, sturdy, and handles great on the road. Probably my favorite gang car. All the other gang cars in this game have a top heaviness problem, as in they flip super easily. Like right here, if I Tokyo drifted with any other gang car, like the cartel truck I was driving, I would definitely be upside down. The handling is just that unwieldy on that thing. We're getting close to the car, and you'll notice that it's an Infernus. Oh, wait a minute. What's this pager? This is Maria. The car's a trap. Meet me at the slip south of Callahan Bridge. Okay, I'll take your word for it, Maria. Actually, in all my hatred for Maria, she does pull through here. Even though she is the main reason why Salvatore set you up. Ugh. Anyway, if you ignore Maria's message and hop into the Chino, which I mistook for a furnace earlier, if you get into the car, you'll die in a fiery explosion. See what I meant when I said that Salvatore's missions were explosive? Listen, Salvatore thinks that we're going behind his back, so he was offering you to the cartel in order to make a deal. I couldn't let him do that. I mean, the worst thing is, it's all my fault because I told him we were an item. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Look, you're a marked man on the Mafia turf, and I've got to get out of here, too. I've seen too much killing, too much blood. I... Look, this is a friend of mine, okay? She's an old friend, and it's so good. She's someone we could trust. Come on, enough of the speeches. We better get out of here before we get more hysterical Italians wanting less friendly reunions. Mitasuka, or Asuka as the name is supposed to be more properly pronounced in Japanese. She is the co-leader of the Yakuza, and the Yakuza are situated on Staten Island. Okay, don't take a seat there, ladies. Just stand on a moving boat in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> they must be wearing magnetic shoes or something. Anyway, Asuka is the sister of a Yaku... Ugh, I can't talk today. 
Asuka is the sister of a Yakuza boss named Kenji, and with her being the younger sister of the boss that makes her the co-boss, the secondary boss. I don't exactly know how the hierarchy for Japanese gangsters work, I'm pretty sure it's kind of different than the Italian Mafia, which I'm more familiar with, but then again it could be similar in that I'm just not that educated. Asuka and I are gonna have to talk. Uh, why don't you go cruise around? You'll need a place to lie low. There's a warehouse at the edge of Belleville that should suit your needs. Come back here to my condo when you're ready, and you and me can have a little chat. Asuka is one of the more unique characters of the game because of her... methods. Alrighty, so we just escaped Salvatore's wrath, but we'll get him next time. Promise me we'll get him next time. Anyway, here on Staten Island, you'll find more high-end cars like the Banshee, the Infernus, and the Stinger. And also, this part of the map will take some time to figure out as there are a lot of overpasses and tunnels that you have to familiarize yourself with as they are not properly conveyed on the minimap. And this ammunition is probably the best store in the entire game. Actually, it's the last ammunition store you'll find in the entire game because, believe it or not, we're at the halfway point of GTA 3. <laughs> This game is extremely short if you can believe it or not. It's not as long as Vice City and nowhere near as long as San Andreas, so... Yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, things are about to heat up in the next part, as Claude is now working for the Yakuza, and he's got a bit of a score to settle with Salvatore. So, stay tuned for that, because... Ooh, <laughs> can't wait to see what's going to go down.